Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to be running through the brand new Adobe Illustrator 2020 update that's just been announced at the Adobe Max conference in LA. Now it's brand new as of November 2019 so if you're watching this video retrospectively do be aware that it may well have updated since then. Now just to pre-warn you, this update has been slightly underwhelming from Adobe. There are only actually two feature updates that we're going to be running through today. The rest are really more performance based, which is obviously a good thing as well. But don't go into this expecting a whole host of new features as you will be disappointed. Now that's not to say they're not going to continue to update this iteration of Illustrator, but at the moment we have mainly the same software as the 2019 version. Let's head onto the computer now and we'll take a look at some of these new features. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator 2020. Now, obviously there is no difference in the appearance of it. If you're still working on Illustrator 2019, it's still going to look exactly the same, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The workspace and the appearance of Illustrator has always been pretty good, so there's no issue there. If I go down to my dock, you can see that this is definitely Adobe Illustrator 2020. For some reason, they've changed the app logo for Photoshop. It's now got these rounded corners and brighter text. Don't know why they've not done the same for the other software packages that have been updated for 2020. So on screen we have the template file that we're working from. You can download this exact same template file from the link in the description if you'd like to follow along from home and check out these new features for yourself. Sadly though there are only two new practical features that we're actually going to be talking about in this example. So like we were saying this is a pretty underwhelming update from Adobe. Not sure why they've not taken this any further but we only actually really have two practical new features. There is much improved performance according to the official Adobe website. Files should be opening much faster, things like effects should render much faster as well and we also have things like background saving added as well but in terms of practical use features we just have these two that we are about to show you. So over on our right hand artboard we have some very rough sketched images that we have embedded into this document. So we literally used a ballpoint pen to create these and you can see the quality of these images is terrible. It's very rough but that's where we're going to show you one of the new features is actually quite useful. Now we say it's a new feature, it is actually a feature that's been in previous iterations of Illustrator. It's the Simplify Path tool, however it's been updated to be even more efficient essentially. So what I'm going to do first is image trace the these two images. So I'll focus on this left hand image first. So I'm just going to go over to my image trace panel. This is exactly the same as previous iterations of Illustrator so there's no updates to this. However we just need to get this into a vector format. So I'm just going to use the standard black and white preset, the default preset. I'm going to click ignore white and then I'm going to click preview and this is okay but I want a little bit more of the text coming through so I'm just going to adjust the threshold here and I really want as much of this text as possible so this isn't too bad might up the paths and corners here and this is where the feature we're about to look at is good so I'm actually going to push this quite far and make it really quite rough looking so I'm just going to click expand and you can see because of our image tray settings we've got the dots from the dotted paper that we used coming through as well so I'm just going to right click ungroup then I'm going to select the text area it's all kind of joined together press command x to cut it away and then select all of this, delete it and press command F, paste it back in place. When I'm saying command just assume it's control if you're on a PC so control X and control F. Now you can see a few of the dots from the dotted paper have attached themselves to this text because of the image trace so I'm just going to quickly grab my eraser tool. This feature isn't going to do a great job of getting rid of these larger areas that have just been attached so I'm just going to quickly erase them. We can still be quite rough with this though it's just to get the overall look of the text a little bit smoother. And now for the feature itself with the text selected here I'm going to go up to object, path and simplify. So this feature like I say is already in previous versions of Illustrator so if you are still on Illustrator 2019 do check it out as well as it is still quite useful. However in Illustrator 2020 we now get this simplified slider here and do be aware this can be a little bit annoying to move sometimes if you don't click in the right
right place, you can see it's not going to move. So just be aware that it's a little bit of a bugbear of mine already. Now we have this slider here and by default it's set to an auto setting. So if I click and drag this slider, it's essentially going to simplify these paths even more. It's going to remove anchor points and smooth out the curves the further to the left we bring it. If I go all the way over to the right hand side, it's going to do less in terms of smoothing out these paths. But I can simply drag this along to my desired effect or I can click the auto button which sits to the right as an A next to it and that will go back to our auto setting. Or to the right of that we have these three dots and if I click them we can actually open up some more advanced settings here. So what I can do here is adjust these two sliders. The simplify curve option again that's going to remove anchor points and simplify the paths and the curves. Below that we have a corner point angle threshold and that's essentially going to smooth out any corners. The further across to the smooth side we take this you can see it's really going to smooth everything out. I've found that going for a smoother corner point angle threshold and a slightly higher simplify curve value has worked best in the examples that I've looked at so far but this is completely dependent on the object you're trying to simplify. Obviously the sketch that we were image tracing was very rough. We deliberately kept the image trace quite rough as well just to get a little bit more information through so it's not going to do a perfect job here but you can see already if I uncheck preview what a difference this has made just to simplify this whole thing. What I can also do which I found works quite well is just slightly simplify it so we've still got quite a lot of detail here we'll go with something like that I'll click OK and then do it again so you can do this as many times as you want and I found this is actually almost a slightly more efficient way to get a more accurate look if I simplify it a few times it actually can really help. So maybe take this right down to the smoothest value and then just play around with our simplify curve slider. The other thing I wish they had put in was an actual percentage box on the right hand side so I could go up one percentage at a time with my arrow keys. Instead I have to kind of click and drag and you can see every time I move it it does actually change quite drastically so that's where I would prefer just being able to budget one percent at a time essentially. So what I might do is simplify it to that point again, click OK and we'll do it one more time. Again opening up the advanced options, simplify these curves and we'll go with something like that. It's obviously not perfect but this is very much based on how rough our image was. You're still getting a good idea for what it's doing and if I go to my direct selection tool and zoom in you can see it's just taken out so many anchor points. It's really simplified now so it actually makes it much easier to then go and tweak further. We could just use the direct selection tool to kind of tweak any anchor points, round certain sections off and it's much easier to do this. So we'll do one more example with a slightly more simplified design here. So again I'm just going to image trace this. We'll click ignore white, preview. And this has actually done a pretty good job right from the off. Maybe increase my threshold slightly just to get a little bit more width into the line there. That's fine. I'll click expand. Again I'm just going to grab my eraser tool just to get rid of some of the dots that have joined into this curve here. Again it doesn't have to be particularly accurate. The simplify path feature should sort that out. Again I'll select this, go to object, path and simplify. We'll see if this slider can do a good job here. Often found as well that it is easier just to go into our more options panel here and play with these settings instead of trying to just use the automatic slider. So again I'm going to take our corner point angle threshold right down and then just play around with our simplify curve slider until we get something we're happy with. You'll also notice that we can click auto simplify and that's just going to revert it back to the automatic settings so I could do that now. You'll see it's, it's changing it based on what it thinks is the best appearance for it. However I'm just going to take this back down to a smooth option increase this slightly and you can see down here we also have an option to convert to straight lines if I check that it's gonna look really crazy right now but what that's essentially doing is taking out all of the curvature within the paths and it can create quite an interesting look in this example it's not working at all but do play around with it as you can get some quite interesting looking designs with that feature I also have show original path and that will just highlight the original path it's not much different from what we had it before so you're not really gonna see much I actually find it 
bit easier just to uncheck and check our preview option. So I'm just going to click OK and that's really it for that. So it's a fairly useful new feature, however it's not exactly groundbreaking, especially when the simplify path function was already in Illustrator 2019. However, the actual user interface for this tool is a little bit better, I'd say. Now going on to our second and final feature, it's just a quick and easy way to highlight misspelt words in Illustrator. So again, this is something that probably should have been in Illustrator by default anyway. However, they've finally got round to adding this as an easier shortcut. So you can see we've got a misspelt word here. However, there's nothing highlighting it. So if you've got a document with lots of text, it's not that easy to immediately tell if there's any misspelt words apart from going up to edit and checking your spelling. However, now I can right click and you can see we have a spelling option within our menu and we have an auto spell check setting here. So if I just click this, it's now going to highlight any misspelt words with the red underline that we see in a lot of other software and on websites and things. So like we say, this is probably something that should have been in Illustrator a long time ago, but it's good that they've finally added an easy way to check this now. So that's really it. So there you have the two practical feature updates in Adobe Illustrator 2020. As you can see, this is a slightly underwhelming update from Adobe, but we do hope they continue to add to this throughout the course of the year. Now, one other interesting development from the Adobe Max conference is that they will be releasing Illustrator on the iPad next year sometime. So that is potentially a very exciting addition to the Adobe Creative Cloud. Of course, we will be releasing videos as and when that comes out and letting you know how it works and how it could benefit you as a designer. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit Graphic Designer Pro dot com. See you next time.